Hi, this is Nikki Michaud. You're watching the What's Your Opinion podcast. Welcome to the sixth episode of the What's Your Opinion podcast. My name is Landon Buford, and today's guest is Nikki Michaud. She's been in featured shows such as Lincoln Heights, um, in the Dark, which is on uh, CW right now, and she was just in Chicago PD as well, just to name a few of her background um, uh, performances. How are you doing today, Nikki? I'm doing good. How are you doing? It's good to see you. Good. It's, it's been about, what, um, two years since I've seen you in person. You were yes. in LA for All-Star yes. Weekend, and I think prior to that, I think it was like maybe a year since we did our last interview. Yeah, it's been a minute. I mean... It, Time has expanded during the coronavirus, so it feels like we've been during coronavirus for years, but um, so it was probably <laughs> like months. 18 months ago. <laughs> What'd you say? It's only been like four months, but it feels like a year already. It feels like so, I mean, a long time. It's a long time. So I guess we can go get started since we're both short on time here. So um, I guess yeah. the, fir the first course uh, question is, throughout your 20, 20 plus year career in the entertainment business, you played numerous medical and law enforcement roles. Um, with the COVID- I'm so sorry, hold on my phone. Like, let me turn off my- Okay. Stuff you want, let's, let's get that question again. Okay, sorry about that. No, you're fine. Um, throughout your 20 year, uh, year career, 20 plus year career in the entertainment business, you played uh -huh. a lot of roles with law enforcement and medical. Mm -hmm. Um, with the COVID-19 pandemic and Black Lives Matter at the forefront, um, yes. how important is, is actors and actresses such as yourself um, uh, to play roles, I guess, that can help change the narrative when it comes to first, first, uh, first responders? Well, I mean, well, I think the big thing is we definitely need the representation. We need the representation of both in front and behind the camera for all the stories that we tell. But I also think we want to tell these stories honestly. I mean, I don't think not every, not every, not every cop is a hero, not every cop is a bad guy, but I think we do want to tell these stories honestly and take a critical look at the criminal justice system. And I don't know that we've done as much of that as we could. You know, I think TV is a great opportunity to start looking into some of these things um, like the systemic racism in the criminal justice system, in the healthcare system, um, and really educate people. Because sometimes a lot of people, I mean, what we discovered with this whole um, resurgence of this movement is a lot of people are just unaware of how deep this racism goes and how it's impermeated all these structures of our society. So I think it's, it's, in, it's in, on us, on Hollywood, to tell these stories as truthfully and as accurately as we can, even though it's painful. I, I was gonna say, you, like I mentioned at the top of the show, you've been in numerous uh, yeah. shows across every platform from you know, in, uh, 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 you gonna say NFL. No, I was gonna, I was gonna <laughs> say NFL, yeah. <laughs> it's, on the bra it's, NFL. On the <laughs> it's on the brand, it's on the brand. It's on the brand. My years with the, with the Rams yeah. have been very exciting. To, yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody's been watching a whole lot of ESPN. That's what I do. Yeah, a lot of ESPN, a lot of you know, yes. things across the, across the board. But, I mean, um, I'm watching ESPN, like, to maybe, you know, just catch highlights of old stuff. I mean, I could, anything to take a break from the news, right? Ex exactly. I mean, yeah. I mean, uh, but shows like Blue Bloods, um, NCIS, yeah. things of that nature, you've been on mm -hmm. almost every day that I, that, I, that could, you know, go down and listen, think of. Okay. Um, how I haven't done get... Blue Bloods though, but go ahead. Well, most recently, uh, Chicago. No, it's fine, fine. I'm just, I'm just messing with you. Go I ahead. know you're messing with me. <laughs> um, I'm gonna throw you all off. I'm gonna, sorry, I'm gonna be. <laughs> Thank you. It keeps, it keeps me on, on, I'm gonna on my sit toes. Down and be quiet. Go ahead. Go ahead. I'm listening. I'm gonna shut up. Go ahead. What, what's the question? Um, I guess how can you know uh, NCIS, Chicago PD, FBI, Law and yeah. Order, SVU? How can they, I guess, incorporate things that are happening in today's world. I know some shows are doing it, but how can all of them? Let me tell you, you know, read, read the paper, read the paper, tell these stories honestly. I mean, you know, you've got to, first of all, you've got to depict the culture. What kind of culture allows this, this type of violence to go unchecked? Mm -hmm. Because what we have are, you know, these officers, particularly with the George Floyd case, mm -hmm. you had officers that had a history 
well, one officer, let's say, mm -hmm. had a history of complaints. And the way that he killed George Floyd, he knew he was good. Mm -hmm. He wasn't worried about being photographed. He wasn't worried about being on camera. He wasn't worried about if that guy died. He sat there with a certain calmness about it. And when you're able to pull that off, you're living in a culture that accepts that kind of violence where a certain segment of the population doesn't matter, right. where Black lives have been dehumanized. So I think that we should just tell those stories. Like, what kind of culture is that? And it's not pretty. Mm -hmm. But I think that we should get into that because, you know, what was cool about you know, I don't, I don't know all cop shows, so mm -hmm. whatever I say, just sure. know I know it. This is my little, come on, y'all, yeah. just, just my little. But one of the things that was interesting about The Shield, which I did back in the day, was it was about a bad cop and a bad group of cops mm -hmm. and how they were, like, effed up. Mm -hmm. You know, and it was about trying to bring them down. It was specifically dealing with corruption in, in the police department. And I think it's the same thing here. Like, we can't be afraid to kind of pull back and tell these ugly stories. I mean, everybody wants the cop to be the hero and save the day. Mm -hmm. Nobody more than, you know, me if I'm in distress. However, as a Black woman, if I'm in distress, I pause before I call the police because I don't know how it's going to go. Right. And that's that's not what we I don't think anybody wants to live in that kind of society because no one should be afraid for their life if they call the police for help. Right. And I think that we just want to tell those stories honestly because if we can't take an honest look at what it is and who we are, we mm -hmm. can't change. That's true. I feel like, you know, it's funny, I feel like we're all in a relationship with each other, like <laughs> a big family. Like, look, y'all, we got it, we gotta come to the table and be honest. You can't be honest with me, we can't talk. We exactly. Can, and because we can't go forward. If you and your person are not having a same conversation, mm -hmm. how do you move forward, you know? And unfortunately, we can't break up with each other. We all live on the same planet. So right, we can't go we anywhere else. with it. We gotta work this out. <laughs> um, I, know, I, I, I'm, I know that you, you just brought up the shield. I mean, I probably yes. wasn't gonna ask this originally, but um, I guess the show you just left is taking a lot of, fire because the main character is, um, I guess, portrayed as what, you know, he's obviously doing, you know, good work as a, you know, policeman on the show, but he's also using tactics that might not be, that might be questionable. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, I don't want You're to- You're talking about Chicago PD? Yeah. Um, I don't want to get you in trouble here, but I mean, you know, oh. so- Well, what? first of all, let's, yeah, just keep it, let's just keep it real. American audiences have loved that kind of cop for yeah. years. I yeah. mean, you go back to Dirty Harry and all, I mean, this is an old version of a story. Right. Ain't nothing new about this. So y'all can, I mean, you complain all you want, but we just need change. And there's right. no point in picking out one particular thing because it's been done over and over and over for decades. I mean, you just, John Wayne. Mm -hmm. I mean, go back and look at how racist and sexist this crap is. Um, so let's just say, that's what it is, mm -hmm. okay? Mm -hmm. And let's move forward and try and create new stuff. There's no point in nitpicking anything. We need to, we need to, we just need to acknowledge it's all effed up mm -hmm. and, and go for how do we, how do we create something new? How do we create something that's more reflective, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, if you want to have a cop hero show, let's see how a cop from within is trying to change the culture, trying to deal with these cops that get out of hand. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, there's your hero story right there. Because we have a problem that we need heroes to solve. And I think that police officers in the police department are some of the best people to solve it, but they have to be willing to go against their Good own dream. culture. Mm -hmm. But I believe that, you know, we're all human beings. So you have to hold out that we have allies that are, that believe the same thing that we do. I got you. I got you. I mean, you know, a girl can dream. <laughs> um, so from what you've seen as far as the... <laughs> <laughs> is what you've seen as far as the Black Lives Matter protest, like, what are your thoughts yeah. about this? Being that I'm so excited to see all these white people. I'm so excited, you know, because in Ferguson, there, it didn't look like this. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm so excited to see so many different types of people joining this movement, because that gives me hope that we can make real change. So I love it. It's amazing. Portland is, um, is fascinating right now. I mean, and I'm, I'm, you know, what's going on with the military and how they're being used against the protesters is interesting. Um, I think bad. I think I don't, I don't, it makes me very nervous for what may happen in other cities. And I think that that should be stopped. 
Um, but I love the movement and I love the fact that we all have are paying attention, all of us, not just black people, mm -hmm. because we black people can't fix this on our own. Right. We can only to be talk fair, about it. We didn't, to be fair, this is not, we did not create this problem. Right. We, 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 are, we, are, being, we are being attacked. And right. so we need, we need some of the attackers to, to turn around and, and, and get on the other side. And I, that's what I love about what's happened with this movement. You mentioned Portland. I know Damian Lillard talked about it yesterday. I don't want to quote exactly what he said because I didn't listen to the whole thing, but he addressed it and said that, yeah, he was, he didn't know that he, that it was happening until people reached out to him. And then he went on Twitter and actually looked at it and said, yeah. and gave opinion and stuff like that. And I know the governor of, uh, of Washington state wants to make sure that doesn't happen in Seattle. Cause you know, they're going to be, um, I think Trump's well, the, I, the bottom line is, if the governor and the mayor have not requested help from the federal government, troops should not be sent in. That right. it, that I think a lot of commentators I've been hearing are calling it unconstitutional. So um, the same thing happened in D.C. when when finally the mayor had to n kick them out of the D.C. hotels and mm -hmm. and slowly but surely you know the military's gone. But the real problem is that they don't have badges. Mm -hmm. They don't have badges. They don't have names. They're dragging people off in unmarked cars. Where where do we live? What is this? Mm -hmm. So, you know, we're still in a democratic country and um, there are police that can handle police those types of problems with any type of unrest. And, you know, spray painting, tagging a building is not terrorism. Right. It, it's freedom of speech. I get, I mean, you can really, I mean, if you think about it. It, it, it ain't terrorism. You yeah. may not, you may not like it. You may not agree with it, but that is, that is a version of protesting and we have a right to protest. Is you're, there, gonna give me a so, you're gonna give me so much trouble. <laughs> let me, let me, let you me ask me questions, I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna tell you what I. <laughs> let me, let me change gears a little bit. You mentioned other groups, right? Or, or, I mean, uh, uh, you, we need more white voices, right? Is there any groups within Hollywood that are speaking up about this besides individuals, but like certain groups that have, I don't within know. that, I guess you could say that six group of that own everything, I guess you could say is, that people keep talking well, about? Well, I don't know. Yeah. I, I don't really care who speaks up. It's about what's done. Okay. It's, I mean, because, you know, as you said, I've been here 20 plus years. Yeah. This is not the first wave of like, oh my God, we need to make change. Oh my God, we, how can we be, change our voices? And then it, everybody sits back down. Right. So I'm not really interested in who's speaking up. I'm interested in what, what's going to go on the air. What's, what, what shows have money behind them? What right. projects have money behind it? What gets out there? What gets distributed? What gets on air? What gets advertising dollars? Because that's what matters. Talking about it, I mean, it's cool. Put your, put your money where your mouth is. is what you're We saying. have to see where the results yeah. are. So I'm waiting. Of course, um, we're all waiting to go back to work. <laughs> I guess, how, how, how has work affected the industry from your opinion? I mean, from your standpoint with the the COVID situation, are, I mean, I, shut it down, shut it down, it's just, it's, it's like crickets, it's crickets. I mean, I do know some friends that are doing like some projects, mm -hmm. and, um, but for the most part, dramatically, it's nothing. shut down. Yeah, nothing. So, um, you know, we all have quite a bit of time on our hands. <laughs> yeah. so. well, well, that's why we're able to do things like this, you know. This, this, this is why I know all about Portland and what's unconstitutional. I've been reading. <laughs> <laughs> you, got, you have to educate yourself. I mean, this is the oh. best time to do it. It's the best Let time me to tell do you, it. there is so much happening right now with our country. You have got to stay on top of it. And I mean, little things that are actually gigantic things like voter suppression, mm -hmm. how they're closing polling places, um, they're sending in troops places without consent of, of the local authorities. I mean, these are these are major violations that, and you know, I'm wondering where are all my good upstanding white NRA members who allow this to happen? Because you know, their whole thing about we have the right to bear arms because we don't want to we don't want to be overrun by the government. Yet mm -hmm. you have a piece of the population seemingly being overrun by the government. NRA is silent. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. Okay. It, that, true. Typically ha that typically happens around when there's a Republican in office. Nothing, nothing, yeah, they, they're so, it more than anything else when, it, when that happens, because they're, they're, they're being funded and everything else. You know, it's just that, but, um, you know, all of us have these mm -hmm. rights. Mm -hmm. All of us do. So there's so much that we can, can need and must pay attention to just to be able to be, you know, a good citizen. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. <laughs> it takes work to be a citizen. Freedom is not easy. 
No. And, they, and, and like you said, we had to fight for the freedom from the beginning. So now we're continuing to fight for freedom. We continue you know, to fight. We're 40, every to 40 fight. years, we, you know, the president has to sign that we can vote. You know what I'm saying? Like still. At first the of all, first of all, why is it that they got to renew that shit? Yeah. I mean, just change. We, we can, we can, we can that talk part. that part. On I a, mean, off that off. part. Like, why do we need to keep coming back? <laughs> As if, you know, like, we'll let y'all have it for a little while. We're just not sure. That in and of itself, the potential to be disenfranchised. Come on. It's crazy. This is, the, this is why we have to be active. This is, why, this is why I am doing this new talk show for Moms of Black Boys United. I am the host of a weekly talk show, Mobbing in Your City, where we talk to moms in our organization who are on the front line trying to make this type of change. Mm -hmm. because, and it's regular people, right? Look, I'm also regular, by the mm -hmm. way. Um, but but we are all banded together. We, trying we all regular. We all regular. We all, people. Everybody regular. <laughs> Especially when the police come around. You real Exa regular. Exactly. But, exactly. Like, exactly. But you know, so I, I did this. I stepped up to do this because none of us can sit on the sidelines. Mm -hmm. So much is at stake. And I wanted to shine a light on the work that we're doing as an organization, shine a light on some of these issues, and mm -hmm. also let people know, look, there's a space for you, whether you want to have a lot of time to volunteer or, you know, five minutes a week, but there is room for you in the movement. And now is the time for us to get organized. I know you're upset. I know people are in pain. I know you're angry, but we got to channel that anger and get organized. And that's how we make change. Exactly. Exactly. Saturdays. I think we're going to run it Saturdays at noon or Mondays at seven, but okay. it's mobbing in your city. Check it out. Mobbing in your city. Um, I know that you're also... You're, you're, you're bit, even though we're still at home, you're still busy answering emails and things of that nature, but yeah. you just um, were a part of a show called In the Dark. Yes. Uh, you turned a role yeah. from a, maybe a couple, couple episodes and then basically turned yourself into yeah. a, a, you know, mainstay character. How yeah. are you able to do that? Oh, I, you know, that's just a blessing. I didn't do anything except I did the work. I showed up. They liked it. And that's, that's the blessing part of it. You know, sometimes it doesn't always work like that. Um, and, and I have, it's been a wonderful mm -hmm. working relationship. It was so fun to be bad. Mm -hmm. It was so fun. So I, I love, our, I love our diversity and our, uh, our movement for inclusion, but I still want to play bad guys because <laughs> it's, it's still the movies, people. Yeah. I mean, we still got to have a little fun. So um, for me, it was really fun to dig in and play this gangster like that. Oh, it's fun. So you can binge it on, on Netflix right binge. now. Okay, okay. I mm -hmm. guess final question. Yes. Um, I know since you've, you've been in the business a while, yeah. I guess for you, is, would you rather play like multiple roles or would you ever be at, like, at a, like in a mainstay project? Um, What's a mainstay you know, project? So like... like so like if you're if it's like going on season 20 or season five or season six oh hell like, yeah are you kidding me that's called the lottery oh <laughs> absolutely yes is there one that you know about that I'm, I'm available i'm definitely available yeah well one um you know just the there, there's the financial benefit mm. but also shows like that that really they don't last that long unless they're resonating with an audience right and to be able to come into people's homes and share stories. I mean, that was the wonderful part of being a part of Lincoln Heights for mm -hmm. four or five years, because you come into people's homes, you get to tell these beautiful stories and, and, and impact people in so many ways that you don't know. I mean, I still hear from people on, on social media mm -hmm. on how the show's impacted them. And so to be able to be a part of a show that, that really hits with an audience, that, that is more than you could ever hope to achieve. I mean, it's amazing. And, and I mean, people are, I guess they, they're, they associate you with those shows. So like, yes, taste, yeah. I mean, you take Lincoln Heights, take Scandal, right? I mean, Lincoln Heights, guys, yeah. Well, I, you, but I'm or also scandal. talking about, or Scandal, right? I mean, yes. I'm, uh, people use those to get, you know, gauge their, you know, their celebrities and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And when those shows go away, it's like, what are you guys doing? You see them going place to place to place. And it's like, well, we are used to having them on a certain diet every day. I mean, every yeah. week and stuff like that. So it's kind of, and I think we need more, we need more roles for the, you know, for our, uh, our minority actors. I mean, like kind of like our, you know, white counterparts do. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, I mean, we have to create it. They need to fund it. Um, and that's what we're all working on. I mean, I think I know so many people who are working on creating that content. And it's up to the, you know, the big producers out there, the big studios out there to, you know, start green lighting this stuff. But there's a lot of really great content. There's a lot of really great content, interesting content, uh, taboo subjects that I just love mm -hmm. that's out there. Like, have you seen I May Destroy You? No, but I need to. Is it on Netflix? Netflix? It's on HB. It's on HBO. HBO. Okay. You must watch that show, then come back to me afterwards. Fantastic. Fantastic. Is this will be the last one before I let you go. Is there anybody else that that's black owned studios outside of Tyler Perry that's coming up that might, you know, be able to help do that other than what other than Well, the I mean, there's a lot of yeah. there's a lot of different companies. I mean, Lena Waithe has a company, uh Hill McGrath. State Street's got a company. Viola Davis has a company. I mean, everybody's doing things. I mean, mm -hmm. Carrie Washington with uh, Little Fires Everywhere. I mean, there's stuff out there. Okay. Um, that So you just have to, I don't want to say look for it, but, but, but there, there are definitely a lot of people out there trying to change the landscape. It's a lot of good work. It's beautiful. Uh -oh.